This body of believers may never ever be able to go to that shut in neighbor that you have and deliver some groceries. But you as a member of Encounter Church and you as a member of the body of Christ, you can do that. When I was a kid, my dad, um, he wasn't saved my whole life. He didn't get saved until I was probably 12 or 13. When dad got saved, he got, he was like all in. He was all in for Jesus. And it kind of made mom mad because she was the one dragging us all to church. And then dad gets saved and then he starts outpacing mom. And mom's like, hey, man, I'm the one that showed you how to do this. And he was like, just get out of the way. I got stuff to do, you know. But dad would, he, he was not a public speaker. You would never have seen him get up here on a stage and talk to people about literally anything. That was not his jam. Uh, dad was the kind of guy I liked to work with his hands. He would get out and just do things. And my wife thought that those kind of skills are genetic. <laughs> they are not. If you have ever seen a project that has been done at my house and my hands have been involved in it, you would think Emmett, my eight-year-old son, had done those things. Joke was on her. She thought she was, she thought she was marrying for skill. Just looks, sorry, babe. But, uh, but anyway, that was my dad's love language. That was how he loved on Jesus, you know, was going out and doing things. And his favorite part of doing things was making it family time, uh, which involved dragging me and my three brothers along to go do some of these church chores, I guess you could call them. There was one time... This church we grew up in was an old, it was an old school, it was old church, old church. And they literally, this is not, not an exaggeration, literally had bats in the belfry. We had Sunday night church back in those days. And so like you'd be sitting there praising and then feel something and it was the bats. And so dad decided we can fix this. We can, I, I know how to solve this. And he takes me and my little brother and puts us into the attic of the church with 22s <laughs> to shoot to shoot the bats in the attic of the church. And of course you shoot one and what happens? Like it was it was one of the least pleasant experiences of my life. But there was this other time dad took us to a, a fella in the house in the church his name was Jim. And dad takes us to Jim's house and it's to to put on a roof for Jim. <laughs> This was the worst day of my whole life. Like I look back and I talk to my brother and I'll say, you remember that time, dad? And he says, if you're talking about Jim's roof, I don't want to, my brother's like, this is a seared into our minds of how bad a day this was. My job was haul shingles up, rip stuff off, do what I was told, get yelled at. That was my job. So I'm doing all those things and I'm sitting there on the edge of Jim's roof and I'm looking at the ground and I'm like, if I fall off of here, worst case scenario, it's like a broken arm. And I would gladly have a broken arm to not work on Jim's roof anymore. And I really prayed about this for a long time about falling off of this roof so that I wouldn't have to do this, like feigning, like, ah, oh, and you know, and I didn't do it because I knew that dad would make me carry shingles with one arm. So I didn't do it. But I want you to see something like, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, this was not my, this was not ideal for me. This is not what I wanted to do. It was hot. I didn't want to be there, but my dad had me there to serve the body of Christ who couldn't help themselves. Now, had Jim come to the church, the church I grew up in was a great church. Had he come to the church and asked, hey, can the church help with this? I'm sure the church would have done something about it, but he didn't. But somebody saw the need and said, that's somewhere that I can serve. That's something that I can do something about. You see, one of the things we run into is we see a need and we have a heart to do something for it. And then what do we do? We go to the church and we say, pastor, I think something needs to happen here. I think we need to do something here. And I agree with you. Yes, the church does need to do something about that. Aren't you the church? Now coming to me for advice or whatever is all well and good, but is God 
asking you to serve in this capacity? Is God asking you to make something happen here? Or is God asking you to tell me? I don't want you to think that whenever I hear something, I'm gonna come to you and say, hey, I see a need here and you need to do this. God told me you have to do this. No, if God is talking to me, he's talking to me. If he's talking to you, he's talking to you. And you are capable of serving in every capacity that God is putting in front of you. Yeah, some of these things are gonna be big. Some of these things are gonna be a lot. Some of these things are gonna be things that you're like, I'm not sure I'm up to this yet. But that's why we go to people and we find help and we get advice on how to do things. But at the same time, when Jesus is laying that need at your feet, there is that expectation there that he has that you'll be the one to take care of that need. We all have a part to play. We all have a role to serve. Every single one of us can serve in the body of Christ. Every single one of us. There's not a one of us that is exempt from this. Jesus walked this earth serving and meeting needs. How can we do less? How can we do differently? It's our responsibility to serve and to give as Jesus did. There are things that Christ is going to call you to do. Ministry opportunities that Christ is going to call you to do. Serving in your community that nobody else in this room will ever know anything about. You, the person you help, and heaven will be the only person that you ever know, that ever know that you did those things. But I would hope that by serving within the body of Christ, that helps you begin to grow and harness that skill so that you can become more and more and more effective in the things that God is placing in front of you to do. This body of believers may never ever be able to go to that shut-in neighbor that you have and deliver some groceries. But you, as a member of Encounter Church, and you, as a member of the body of Christ, you can do that. This body may never be able to put gas into the gas tank of that single mom that might be struggling this week, but you, as a member of the body of Christ, can do those things. First Peter chapter number four, verse 10 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. There's a couple of things that Peter's saying there that I want us to look at. Number one, I want us to see that Peter know, is telling us that God knows exactly who you are. Now, it doesn't specifically say that, but how do I know that he's saying that? Because he is saying that God knows every single one of y'all have a gift. You have an ability. You have some sort of skill that God has given to you. The list goes on and on and on of what those gifts and those skills look like, but God has placed those things into you. He has allowed your life to play out the way that it has so that you will develop into the person that you are so that those tools that you have are there, that they are available. But also, Peter is saying that ultimately, all power, all glory belong to Jesus. Am I doing this for myself? No. I am doing this for the sole purpose of pointing people closer to Jesus. What are the abilities that, that God has blessed you with in your life, and how can God use those things both within the walls of the church to serve and advance the kingdom, but also outside of the walls of the church. Men and women with past, the shame that we carry sometimes from the life that we used to live, those things that we used to walk through, some of that shame sometimes can be, feel overwhelming. It can make us feel as though we're unworthy and unusable and untouchable, but at the same time, God can take those things in our lives and make a difference with them. Nothing goes to waste in the kingdom of God. God is capable of turning those things and changing them into something positive. Romans 8, 28 tells us that, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So most, most of y'all know my story. You know the things that I've walked through. You know some of the things that I've been through. But I wanna, I wanna, I wanna kind of look at this this verse here. 
We read that verse and it says that he works out everything for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose, right? Now we always internalize that, right? Well, you know, God, I went through this and I went through that, but God's turning it around for my good. I, am, I find it very hard for me to look at my past of alcohol abuse and being mean to my kids and my wife and my family. I don't see how those things are good for my family now. I, I mean, I just don't. I, they joke about it a lot. They talk about who I used to be a lot. And maybe that's the benefit. Maybe that's them looking at my life and saying, I don't want to be that person that dad used to be. Maybe that's the, the plus. Who can I pick on that won't be mad at me? James is good. James. Okay, James. James loves, you love God, right? You're called according to his purpose, right? Now, I don't, I'm not going to share James' story. That's James' story to share. I'm not going to divulge any secrets, but hypothetically, maybe James is going through some junk. And I can take my life and my junk and my crud, and I can talk to James, who loves God and is called according to his purpose, and God can take this junk that was in my life, and he can turn that for good in James' life, right? So why in the world would I ever look at an opportunity with shame and doubt and fear and worry and stress when God is laying in front of me an opportunity to serve and to give and to love and to speak and to be the hands and feet literally of Jesus in this world. God can turn those things around for his good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Where then do I make those things happen? Where do I serve? Where do I give? Where do I invest? The best place that we can start giving as believers is in the the four walls of our home. Hear this. As parents, if we want our kids to follow us in the way that we live our lives, to follow us in serving, to follow us in loving Jesus, to follow us in being an example to others around us and follow us in giving, we have to do it. And we have to bring them along to be a part of it. We don't force it on them, but we at least give them the chance by placing them in an opportunity where they can receive. Men, I'm gonna talk to you and I'm only gonna talk to you because I'm a guy and so I've kinda got the inside track on some of this stuff. You work all day and you're tired at the end of the day. We come home and we're exhausted. We wanna come home, we wanna relax, we wanna watch TV, we wanna do the things that are gonna be relaxing for us. We walk into the house, the yard needs mowed, The oil needs changed in the car. The dishes need done. The house needs to be cleaned. Laundry needs to be folded. This is going to sting and it's going to sting me, but guys, serve your wife. Serve the person that you say is most important to you. Serve your wife. Not not in a less than way, but in a way that says, I love you, that you matter to me. Some of those things, guys, we're gonna look at and we're gonna say, that's not my job. There is not a dad-husband union that we are paying dues to that is defining what our jobs are, guys. When we are there, we are serving our family. Serve your family in a way that is going to help them see how much we care, how much we love them. It is not going to be fun. It may go unnoticed, but serving and giving starts at home. The Bible, a lot of guys come to me and they want to throw this one out there. The Bible says my wife ought to submit. Bro, you're so dumb. Um, like If you just like having drama in your house, go for it. But yeah, it says that. Who is that written to? It's for wives. So that part doesn't pertain to you, so stop reading it, okay? What does pertain to you? The next part, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. That is the part that is important to us, man. That is the part that that is being written to us. The other part, we're not girls. Don't worry about that part. That's like trying to read the Chinese instructions on Ikea furniture, okay? That part doesn't make sense to you. You worry about what was written for you and serve in your home because I'll tell you what, Jesus served. Jesus loved. He loved to the point of death. Jesus gave up in every sense of the word. He did not exalt himself. He didn't glorify himself. He served to the point of death. 
And if that is my example of what I am supposed to be as a husband, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm not always the best at it. I'm not, I told you I was going to preach to myself, babe. But I'm just telling you that that is what we have to do. Serve one another. Wives, you know the part that's written for you. I'm not getting into that. Love one another. Give to one another. Prioritize one another. So many times we prioritize everything else in our lives. And we don't prioritize the things that matter. And then those things fall apart. And we're like, what happened? I got to prioritize. And it carries over. When I get that part right, and I take that over then into the kingdom of God, and God starts laying things at my, ha- at my feet that I can begin to do, that I can be- begin to serve, and I can begin to give, and I can begin to focus and do the things that God's asking me to do, how awesome is that, that I'm like, hey, I've already got that skill because I've been practicing at home. I want every th- single one of us to fall in love with serving. And it's gonna look different for every one of us. The way you serve is not gonna be the way I serve. The gifts you have are not gonna be the gifts I have. The abilities, the talents, the things that God is laying in front of you to do are not gonna be the things that he is laying in front of me to do. But if you begin to pull where God is asking you to pull and the next person does the same and the next and the next and the next and as we pull together, we advance not Jake's agenda, not your agenda, but we advance the kingdom of God together.